Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Lloyd! You're upset. Upset? I gave you $100 million. You're 15 million over. You agreed to not go over. Because you said I couldn't direct unless we agreed. It's like when a girl asks if you want to bang her hot sister. Of course you say no. Neither of you really believes you mean it, though. Hello, it is January 6, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, otherwise known as the Mike and Mike Show today. You'll find out why in a second, uh, where we talk about everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come, and sometimes last year, as the case may be. It's the first show of 2015, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here in Pittsburgh, PA, Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitters. With me is my compatriot in Poughkeepsie, New York. He's all about the movies and the things, and he's introduced me to something I'm going to be blowing through my HBO Go subscription with. <laughs> Thank you, Mad Mike, at Mad Mike4883 up on the Twitters. How you doing tonight, sir? Oh, Sorg is 2015, and I'm feeling green. Green? Or something. What? I don't know. I was trying to think of something that rhymed with 15, and lean just didn't seem to work. Right. Right. Yes. Anyways, uh, <laughs> we just saw, of course, at the beginning there, uh, the Entourage trailer. Now, I've only seen a few episodes of Entourage, like, like from the beginning, you know, um, I think on demand or something like that. And I didn't really get into it at the time. Uh, but this makes me want to see the rest of the series. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, I want to um, see the movie from the beginning of the th of the trailer too, uh, for this to see the entire thing. Yeah, I, I've always been a huge fan of Entourage. I know a lot of people don't like it because it's douchey, frat bro humor, but so was Neighbors, and that turned out to be really funny. Um, Entourage has a lot of really good jokes in it, a lot of really good performances. Um, some of the jokes are misogynistic a little bit, but they have a woman on staff that writes most of those jokes, so I kind of shake it off a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah, that's fine. You know. Yeah, but I mean, it's... It's a fun show. Like, mm -hmm. I swear, you're you're not gonna find a more show that you want to live in the world of than this one. Like, that's that's a realistic thing. And when I heard they're making a movie, I'm like, this is gonna be fantastic because I'm super excited. Because you want that badass Aquaman movie I keep hearing about. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it's not James Cameron's Aquaman starring Vinny Chase. <laughs> unfortunately, it's not that movie. It needs to be, for sure. It, it needs to be. It absolutely does. Like, even if they just did a five-minute funnier die thing mm -hmm. where they do that movie, I'd be okay with that. It's probably better than anything DC is going to turn out. That's true, too. <laughs> That's true, too. Hey, an Aquaman series almost happened. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I need, should we even bother with the box office? I mean, the big story, if you want to get into box office and things making 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 waves out there, uh, I mean, The Hobbits uh, leading at 21 million, Into the Woods at 18, Unbroken at 18, uh, Women in Black 2 was the latest, you know, there was a one, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's basically been The Hobbit because they pushed back American Sniper, too. Right. Oh, they, I have, I have well, a feeling no, no, no. that they would had, have done. They pushed it back or did it just have a limited release? I thought it always had a limited release. Oh, it might have just had a limited release then. Yeah, but like I, but I know it's, I know it releases wide in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I'm still getting, uh, I'm still getting notices to see it free here next week, which is. I, I have a feeling that if the interview came out, that would have beaten the Hobbit. You think? Yeah, with, absolutely. You, you talking it, with everything that happened with North Especially Korea? Especially with everything that happened. Okay, I'm with you there. Um, and, and that's look at, look at the Dark Knight Returns. Right. Right. Um, and that's kind of our lead story here. Um, uh, of course, you know, a lot of it with, uh, you know, with the interview, uh, just kind of making waves all over the place, of course. But uh, 
$15 million. Okay, for those that are catching up a little bit, if you're not keeping up on this, and I don't know who isn't at this point that's in this or tech, um, they finally, a few days before, decided to release the interview on several of the on-demand services, uh, not iTunes initially, but at least Google Play, I think Amazon, uh, a few of those other ones. Most of the cable streams. Most of the cable streamings could get it on demand, of course. And they did have a limited release, I think about 300 theaters on Christmas Day as originally planned. Of course, not a lot of the big chains or anything like that. Alamo Drafthouse kind of leaded the charge on that one. But they're always really cool about stuff like that. Um, made about a million dollars in the theaters on a limited release. That's actually a pretty good number, I understand. But again, $15 million on demand at home. Uh, which I think is a pretty unprecedented number for for on demand in general. Yeah, so, as of right now, it's yeah. it's been out two weeks. It's made over four million. Yeah, considering yeah. how few screens it's on, like the imitation game is on more screens than uh, the interview at this point. I'm just looking at the box office mojo, so, and so, that's what it's, it's saying. It's only on 581 screens. So the big so, question with that is now, you know, what does this do? One, well, first, I've, I've seen the, the articles there are like, yeah, you don't really ever need to see the interview. It's not really that great of a movie. <laughs> so, uh, but what does this do? But you can't argue with the numbers. You know, uh, $15 million on demand in the first week is incredible. And it has to have them considering this for future movies. They're already doing it with certain level of movies, right? And, and I think maybe this opens it up. You know, we already have Kevin Smith doing it with a lot of his films. Only recently has he gone, you know, uh, a distributor that kind of does this kind of limited release on demand pretty soon after kind of thing like he did with Tusk here this last time around. Um, mm-hmm. And actually, or he's touring it and putting it on digital, you know, using these other models. But, you know, maybe this will kind of open that up a bit for a lot of other uh, producers to, to kind of work outside the box. I think it also depends on what the budget of your movie is because oh, like, all, he, all didn't, that's he, didn't spend, he didn't spend that much on Tusk, so what he made in the box office more than made up for it. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, that, and that's a big thing. And that was always his argument. Again, going, uh, we're kind of falling back to the Kevin Smith, but his argument was always uh, they, he would go do like a couple million dollar film and then they spend twice as much on the marketing and then it didn't make any money because the marketing didn't work out. Right. Which, you know, is part of that broken system that he really kind of goes on about. So, so there's that. Um, but it's still, I think, very significant. I haven't seen it. Chachi has seen it in the chat room, he says. Do you want me to uh, get into my thoughts about it or save that? Did you see it? Yes, I did. You did see it. So, what? what okay, I as a movie, you know, again, it was hyped because of kind of the subject matter. But but was it, was it a good movie? I, I kind of, ex- personally, I expect it to be your general Seth Rogen kind of comedy um and apparently there were a lot of dick jokes and stuff and, and oh humor. there are absolutely a lot of dick jokes um i mean it wasn't the worst movie i've ever seen in my life it wasn't the worst seth rogan movie i've ever seen in my life yeah uh but you're not expecting I, I you're not expecting it. shakespeare on this one no of course not i mean i enjoyed it i laughed i laughed more than i did watching dumb and dumber 2 i'll tell you that much uh, yeah, that's easy um my, I think my favorite thing about it was that they didn't give away the good jokes in the trailers. That's funny because I, I, I heard that's did. exactly what they did. But really? I guess it depends. I, on, I guess it depends on what you thought was funny. Points. Maybe they thought, yeah, maybe yeah. you thought you thought the uh, other stuff was funny, you know. And um, the guy they actually got to play Kim Jong Un was pretty good. Yeah, I I have to give him credit because it was it was a real real like. It was kind of like Team America, but not like not as clever. Like I, I, I'm, I'm not because I know a lot of people com- compared it to Team America because of what? Oh, what? really? Okay. Uh, Sorry, yeah, I lost. I was you saying a, a lot of people. Okay, a lot of people were comparing it to Team America because of like the comparisons to North Korea and obviously and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, it was, it was a different take. It was a different movie that I was kind of expecting. Um, because I thought we actually wouldn't get to see the guy who played Kim Jong-un. Uh, Mm -hmm. it was just going to be like Rogan and, um, uh, Franco just like hamming it up and being like the crazy duo the whole time. But it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. 
um, that. It wasn't that, and I was actually pleased about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I would have been satisfied seeing it in the theater for 13 bucks. And this is exactly the kind of movie I would have passed on. But unless the, it was like, oh, I need to go get out of here and see a movie. You know. Um, it, it seems like On Demand is the perfect place for it. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Six bucks, perfect, perfect price for it. Right. Well, we'll have to see what happens with uh, uh, the interview, see if they, they actually kind of do some different stuff and marketing and, and, and you know, if that, that really affects anything. Um, other big news, and I don't know, Mike, I can't remember if we talked about this last night, if you were a fan of this, uh, uh, but we, I know we have some fun <laughs> talking about it last night. Scarlett Johansson uh, will star in Ghost in the Shell film. Now, I am definitely a fan of Ghost in the Shell. I remember the, 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 the first movie when I was kind of getting into it was one of the few that I could rent back in the day or you know, played on Adult Swim or something like that. Um, and you just don't, if you don't know, it, it, it's a very kind of techno mystery, very heady stuff for the most part. Um, you know, one of those those typical Japanese animes that might be a little hard to follow along with, even if it is dubbed in English sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I, I For the most part, love the series, love the original movie. This is actually going to be based on the original manga. Um, I don't know how Scarlett Johansson is going to play a very Japanese-sounding person, Motoko Kusanagi. I think I actually kind of got that right. Um, nice. <laughs> But uh, it, it's, uh, I, I don't know, I like to see it. You know, I hope this turns out better than like an Eon Flux kind of an adaptation did. I know that's I not. I hope it turns out better than Dragon Ball. Oh, yeah, or better than Dragon Ball, yeah. Uh, maybe even a little bit better than Lucy. You know, if it's as good as Lucy, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Like, I was, I was um, actually kind of okay with Lucy. But Oh, uh, yeah, I, I didn't mind Lucy at all. Uh, like, I never saw Ghost in the Shell. It looked like one of those ones I didn't think I'd be allowed to rent. Or buy when I was youngster because the cover is essentially a topless woman. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I can't really bring that. Home oh, one of the very exciting because... points as a as a teenager watching this is when she uh, uh, needs to do her 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 kind of live camo uh, uh, invisible trick, and she basically has to be stripped down naked, but mm-hmm. she's an android, so there's no nipples. Hmm. So it's kind of. So PG thirteen then? Yeah, it kind of ends up like I think they let them do it for the most part when they played it on TV. Like I remember this is one of those films that well, I watched when like Sci Fi had anime on on Saturday mornings. Well, Sorg, I got one word for you. Hmm. Mystique. Yeah, it'd be kind of like that. Yeah, I mean it. It sounds very similar, and all the X Men movies are PG thirteen, so I'm pretty sure they'd be able they'll to be get fine away with it. They'll be fine. Sure, I, and I kind of, and it doesn't need to be PG thirteen, and I don't think it'll suffer from being it. And not that there's any word one one way or another, to be quite honest. But mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. Uh, looking forward to that. And and you got another one here, Mike. You you uh, put this in the rundown from AV Club. Fox is announcing a lot of dates coming up. Yeah, they are. They're announcing a lot of things. All right, Sorg, I'm gonna give you a rapid fire on these movies that are coming out. I want like a one word or one oh, no. sentence. Oh no! Response, here we go. So, okay. 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 All right. What we got here. All right. Are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. Planet of the Apes sequel. Yeah. Is that a word? Okay. Does that work? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Fantastic Four two. Still don't know what the first one is. I'm, uh, I. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Um. Sorry. Uh. All right. Gambit. It's its own movie. Yeah. That yeah. surprised me. Mm-hmm. I'm really failing at this one word thing. And um, finally, The Greatest Showman on Earth with Hugh Jackman starring as P.T. Barnum. That excited me that, as a concept. It's a musical. It's a musical Wait, it's a musical? Okay, I'm not quite as excited. Um, like I wasn't running out to go see a Lady Miserable. Where is her owl? Miserable. Uh, Miserable. Miserable. Thank you. Thank you. I'm getting... <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting looks from the choir over here. I'm <laughs> um, sorry about that, but no, I, but great, but still, like it's Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman's awesome doing whatever he does, you know. Yes. Um. Um. The, like he's the only guy. He's the only X Men with a X Man with a Tony Award, I think. Uh, actually, maybe. Maybe Patrick until Harris. Neil Patrick Harris plays Havoc. <laughs> like I. <laughs> 
But uh, no, it, it, and I don't think you mentioned Assassin's Creed. It's actually well, I didn't before. mention it because you said that was already. Yeah, it was already announced. Well, the, the the story I saw on it was that actually just the story was, hey, Assassin's Creed got pushed back to 2016. Okay. So uh, December of 2016. So looking forward to that. And this is again Fox. Uh, we'll see how, how what they do with that. Um, you know, very excited to see that Gambit's getting his own movie. Uh, uh, I need to hear Channing Tatum's voice for that though. That's it. That's it. Uh, I mean, it, it's well enough of an actor. Okay, mm-hmm. um, so, right? And uh, and supposedly he loves Gambit. Perfect. Like, that that's the heavy rumor, that he loves Gambit and he wanted to play Gambit. So I'm that's like, kind of, isn't if, that... he can, if he can pull off the accent, I'm okay. So if he becomes, like, um, how Hugh Jackman is, like, just into that character and loves Wolverine. I don't know if he did previously, but he just, like, has become everything about that character since... You know, playing him in what are you up to six movies now or so yeah. with him? Um, you know, I I, be, I think Channing Tatum like taking on that Gambit mantle, you know, would be fine. So, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. And Fox is Fox is clearly uh, following the Sony model of announcing sequels of things before the first one comes out, which turned out really well with Spider Man. You guys <laughs> turned out super well. Yeah, yeah, about that. Um, I don't know. Look for again. It's like I haven't even seen anything. Isn't Fantastic Four releasing this year? Yep, it's coming out this summer, and we haven't and seen the trailer. Doctor yet. Doom. Yeah, no, we haven't seen anything from it. Doctor Doom's supposed to be like a vlogger. I don't know. Okay. Um. Anyways, let's get into what we we've, we've watched. Oh, I. Oh, okay. Let, I'm gonna let you go first. We talked about the interview, of course, and I actually mm-hmm. did watch something in there that uh, that that you watched. Um, how was the Hobbit? Um, I'm not the best person to talk about the Hobbit. Uh, I've never <laughs> been a fan of Lord of the Rings. Okay. Full, full disclosure. Um, I saw the first Hobbit. I actually let, let me let me preface this. I saw Fellowship of the Ring. Fell asleep. I saw Two Towers. Fell asleep. Oh no. I saw Return of the King. Fell asleep. Uh, I saw. The first Hobbit fell asleep. Yeah, I saw the Desolation of Smog, who did not do any desolating, fell asleep, and I saw um, the Battle of Five Armies. Um, this may be a, this may be a spoiler. I fell asleep during it a little bit. I, I gotta uh, I gotta confess, I did fall asleep during uh, watching the Two Towers, but it was watching a special release of the extended edition at eleven o'clock on Sunday morning. Really confusing because oh. I dozed off and the guy that died in Fellowship was like mm-hmm. alive again and I didn't understand why. And apparently it was a mm-hmm. flashback that wasn't in the original movie. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so you're saying this wasn't terribly. You're, you're, I mean, well, um, I was with someone who is a huge fan of Lord of the Rings. Yes. She she immensely enjoyed it. Um, I I kind of enjoyed the parts I saw of it. Uh, I felt smog was taken down way too easily for a giant dragon that breathes fire all over the place. Um, I don't know. I just I thought it was stretched out a whole lot, mm-hmm. like a whole lot, because the first whole part of the movie is them still dealing with smog. I'm like, shouldn't this be in the movie that's called The Desolation of Smog? Mm-hmm. But I guess they wanted to give Benedict Cumberbatch two big paychecks, so. Yeah, I really, I, I really felt like they were kind of pushing that, and it sounds like in practice that they, they were, you know, kind of a little mm-hmm. too far. Like that, that, that's like, that's like the 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 epitome of it's like the epitome of um of of like you know you know trying to extend the buck there. I'm sorry, I was distracted because. Uh, Wife of the show just uh, text me over the IMD page, IMDb page for Magic Mike Double XL. Um, oh yeah! Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> there, there's there's a lot of people on that. Yeah, there is, including Joe Mangello. Um, anyways, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's get back to this. I don't know. I don't know if his name is Joe Mangello. I, that's what I I can never say not... it right, so I just go with Mangello. I've, I've heard there's always room for him. I though, should know so. it. He's a Pittsburgher. I, I should completely be behind Joe. Yeah. 
Um, just, just call him Al Seed, Sorg. You mentioned, you have listed here, you have listed here, you saw the BoJack Christmas special. We talked about this last night, I think. Not terribly impressed with that one. No, it, it it really wasn't. I mean, it 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 was a it was a sitcom Christmas special. Yeah, it was completely the funniest. The funniest part was the one member of the live studio audience that kept screaming really inappropriate things out. Mm-hmm. Which you think, uh, you know, on a TV show they would have edited someone screaming, "Yeah, fire that Jew." <laughs> You yeah, think it's, uh, maybe the people who made the series might have edited that? We have edited, yeah, it, well, it was the '80s or '90s or whatever, right? I don't know uh, what the, <laughs> when they timed that, but I guess the '90s would make more sense. But yeah, it's it was all right. It was kind of like a hey, let's have you do a Christmas special. Oh, we're out of ideas. Crap. Uh, let's just do this. <laughs> um, let's uh, the, an excuse to write a really shoddy uh, sitcom to get just get yes. the work done in the end. Um, Doctor Who Christmas special you mentioned on here? Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. I saw the, um, it was, it was a weird take on Inception. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even think about it that way. With Alien. Yeah, not to get too, yeah, yeah, okay. And Santa Claus was involved. Um, well, I thought, uh, of course, as it you was, do. As it was super, Claus. it was super weird for the first little bit. I don't want to get too spoilery on this one. Um, but it settled right into a regular Doctor Who episode pretty quick. It was actually maybe one of my favorite episodes of this season because I have not been the hugest fan of this season of Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. But I, re- I really like this episode a lot. It feels like they kind of are settling into this Doctor now, right? Yeah. Good, good. The Last Christmas. Wait, was that the right one? Yeah, that's right. Yes. The last Christmas. Oh, good. They didn't like it's not, good. It's not like 15 bucks on Amazon. So we'll take care <laughs> of that uh, so we can have that here in the household because uh, somebody was sleeping when I watched it. So anyways, Uh-oh. yeah, yeah. She's giving me dirty looks this whole time. <laughs> so I almost <laughs> didn't bring it up. So. Uh, of course, I, 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 I rewatched portions of uh, Guardians and of the Galaxy and Transformers uh, for um you know uh, guardians is the greatest because like when you're sick or tired it's the movie like i think that is the go-to movie i'm going to put on and you can wake up for like 10 to 20 minutes enjoy yourself and fall back asleep Mm -hmm. like it's like on that level with like ghostbusters or the ninja turtles films for me yes so um so i i I really and i I love that i got a digital so i can just turn it on whatever i have in front of me too so i actually watched uh guardians with the commentary from james gunn oh i need to do that i watched all i watched all of the special features on that one worth it they have this 8-bit thing that happens on it uh definitely (laughs) and and what's really cool is if you get again i get that blu-ray pack i don't have a blu-ray player uh but with the digital on there um they actually include all the bonus features because it's it's the one where you have to pick either iTunes or Amazon to get it through. And mm-hmm. they always include the special features just in one long video track after the movie. Oh, that's so good. So you can just sit there and watch them. So. so did you get to see the preview for Age of Ultron then? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. So uh, all that's in there. And uh, the same thing with the... Ninja, the did I get Ninja Turtles on that one? No, that one's actually on Ultraviolet. So. Um, but then I still need to go rewatch that too. So... Um, and of course we didn't, uh, you wanted to talk about real quick, the flash and arrow finale or mid season finales, I guess, uh, since mm-hmm. I think they came on after we had our last show. And of course, it's definitely something we've been keeping up with here on this show, uh, uh, over the last several months. Um, let's go with, uh, well, I guess flash would be the first one that comes up chron- chronologically. Uh, I but so, yeah. I, I'm really pleased that we've already gotten to reverse flash. Yeah. And, but the, the the great thing I love about it, I still don't know definitively who the reverse flash is supposed to be. Okay. Because I think I think the writers of the show are a little bit more clever and it's not um It's not straight up uh the doctor. No. No. Okay. No, I don't I don't believe so. Because uh, because there are elements like there was a little line that teased that uh, they, that uh, Barry saw red and yellow lightning when he was a kid. Right. So, th- so that to me implies that Barry was in that fight. Yes. Which, of course, implies time travel, knowing the Flash. So. Right. 
The reverse flash could basically be anyone. Okay. Okay. I, I, I have a feeling it's Iris's boyfriend. No, you don't know who Iris's boyfriend's supposed to be? Mm. Firestorm, dude. No, Firestorm. Wait, oh, already Iris is, I'm sorry, Iris's boyfriend. I, I got yeah, confused. Yeah, Iris's boyfriend. Okay. The uh, detective. Okay, I don't know about that. I don't know about well, him. Well, because either. there were two reverse flashes. There was Professor Zoom and uh, Thawne, I believe. Okay. So I, th- it could be, it could be either. Okay, or, or it could become it later, maybe. But I think this is going to be your initial one. But I, I, okay, I see this. So there could be a little twist in there that I was like, okay, he's the one, but he's not the one that go went and did the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we that is this is whole predicated on with the mom. Uh, so, all right, all right, that's you're tickling my brain with that one a little bit. But again, I'm not. I'm all. All I know about the reverse flash stuff is what I know from Flashpoint itself. Right. Um, the both the movie and the graphic novel. <laughs> I, that, that's that's all I know. I don't know any previous reverse flash, you know, kind of history. So. Okay. Um, now Arrow, um, let's kill him and throw him off a mountain. And uh, we're yeah, done. so Arrow's done. And Arrow's we're done. done. I we're done. Uh, all I can think of is he lands directly into a Lazarus pit, and here we go. Now we have like Immortal Flash, or I'm sorry, Arrow. Uh, so, and then he has superpowers because he has Lazarus powers now. So, uh, I, but damn, we have a Rosh Rosh and in in a in a show. And I think uh, I don't know who that is that 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 plays him. Um, I like him better than Liam Neeson. Can I say Ooh, that? I don't know if I like him better than Liam Neeson. I like him better than Liam Neeson. All right, that's all right, that's that's fine. I I don't know if I'd jump that far. He was fine. Not with, I, mean, I don't know why. Not as I don't know as... why Ra's al Ghul always has to fight topless. Oh, that's just that's just the thing. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just the callback, you know. Um, oh, what is the one series? The, the like, there's a classic one where like both him and is like Bane was working for him, and oh, Legacy. It was the Legacy uh, uh, storyline that was I think around the Contagion and the No Man's Land stuff. And there's like, and it keeps this image keeps popping up when I look at Batman history. It's like him sword fighting Batman. Batman also has no no shirt on, uh, but is still wearing the cowl. Yeah. So and they yeah, it, it's just like hey, you know, it, it, that, that's just the callback. So, but um, yeah, but it was such a good episode. Mm-hmm. So good, and especially with um, like I thought that. Thea didn't know who... I thought that she did know that Ollie was the Arrow. Yeah, right. But it kind of seems like she doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure she doesn't. So, I I don't understand how Malcolm would tell her all of this stuff, but not mention that, hey, your brother's wearing a green hoodie and running around shooting people with arrows. Because that's how he fucks with I guess that's true. That's Damn most, you, Captain Jack Harkness! It's the most devious part. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, um, I don't know if there's any big uh, uh, releases this week. Uh, let me take. I don't think so. I don't think. There, I don't think there's anything big for a while. Uh, when's the When's the the Thor hacker movie coming out? Um, opening this week, we have Taken Three, of course, uh, Inherent Vice, Selma, Predestination, and Black Coffee. Um, these are sleepers. That that's all there is to it. It's January. Good luck. Um, well, taking three is going to make some money. Yeah, it's gonna take any money that you know anybody that care just needs to go see a movie is gonna do. I haven't even seen Taken Two, so eh. yeah. I mean, but taking taking three is gonna make money. It's gonna beat out the Hobbit. It's become such a parody think- of itself. Why not? Right? Yeah. And it's still Liam Neeson having a specific set of skills. So it is, it is. Mad Mike, he's at Mad Mike four eight eight three. He joins me on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Um, and uh, I don't know anything else going on, sir. That you need to plug. Um, of course, you do well, other not, shows. I, I do other shows. Uh, you know, I I, do, I jet here, I jet there. Um, I do want to plug Panel Riot. Yes, because Panel Riot is awesome. If you love our comic discussions, you got to go to Panel Riot because that's comic discussions all in caps i always like have a wish list i'm either i mean depending i'm either like adding 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 comics to my marvel unlimited or to my library 
graphic novels, um, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, after I've listened to episode, still won't read the one comic I want you to read. So. I know, I know, I know. We're not getting into that <laughs> one. You and of course, no I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com, is where everything's at that I'm doing. And of course, you can check out everything uh, related to this show ever at the ra- that rambling review dot com. Uh, so Malenga will be back and, next and week. At rambling movies on the Twitter. Rambling Movies on the Twitter, yes. On the Facebook, a great Facebook group for the Rambling Movie Minute as well. Please join that. Uh, we, we're, it's where we get a lot of stories. I know we'll be sharing. We have a little bit of discussion about them. Um, it's been pretty cool. Been pretty cool. Uh, and check us out here live every every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. So until next time, have a Rambling Movie Week. <laughs>